One can argue that the firewall may be the most important security device on your network. As the gatekeeper of what comes in and goes out of your network, picking the appropriate size for your environment can make or break your network and security objectives. I'm Andy with the CISO Perspective, and today we're going to look at five considerations when sizing a next-gen firewall. Number five, connections per second, also known as new sessions per second. Connections per second deals with how quickly the firewall can create and store new sessions that's accepted by the firewall policy. As someone who has sized firewalls for large telcos and federal agencies, determining the connections per second may be the most difficult thing to calculate on a network. The easiest place to determine your requirement would be from your current firewall if you have one in place. If you don't or you can't get that number, here's a little technique to determine what you need. First, count the total number of users on your network. Next, get the total amount of devices without users. This could be IoT devices, servers, printers, phones, and any other network device without users. We'll have to make an assumption here and calculate that each user will use between three to seven sessions per second. Each device will use closer to one to two connections per second. If we use as an example 100 users and 20 devices, we would expect to see anywhere between 320 to 740 connections per second. The 740 connections per second would probably be during peak time, such as after lunch or when users are logging in for the first time. Don't forget to consider potential growth in your users and devices, so make sure you pad your requirement for that expected growth. Number four, total throughput. The most common place to start when sizing a next-gen firewall is by looking at the total layer four throughput for a given device. But a common mistake is to not calculate traffic in every direction. For example, a one gigabit symmetrical circuit is commonly one gigabit down and one gigabit up. This means that on a fully saturated circuit, you can have up to two gigabits of theoretical throughput going through your firewall. And don't forget about internal only traffic, such as Wi-Fi users hitting your DNS server or internal users hitting your intranet portal. Properly designed networks should have segmentation between different networks, which means that all traffic destined outside of that segment would hit the firewall policy and count towards your total throughput. Lastly, make sure you look at what kind of traffic type was used by the vendor in calculating their advertised throughput. Oftentimes, the vendors will advertise UDP with big packet sizes instead of TCP because they perform much better. But with the majority of your traffic probably being TCP, your real world experience will be much less than what's advertised by the vendor. In last year's NSS NextGen Firewall report, there was a vendor that claimed 20 gigabits of throughput. But when NSS turned on their real world traffic profile, that number went down to 3.6 gigabits. Number three, SSL. According to Google's HTTPS encryption transparency report, 73% of pages loaded in Chrome used SSL, up 59% from a year ago. With that number only expected to continue to rise, SSL inspection is becoming a standard for any network. Firewall SSL inspection usually comes in two forms, certificate inspection and deep packet inspection. Certificate inspection only inspects the SSL handshake, so there's usually not a big performance hit because you're not looking inside the SSL tunnel. Deep packet inspection actually performs a man in the middle between the user and the server, so this comes at a huge performance impact. In this year's NSS NextGen Firewall report, there was one vendor who experienced as much as 91% performance degradation when they enabled SSL deep packet inspection. Some vendors that employ custom ASIC saw performance decreases as little as 14%. When looking at any vendor's SSL performance numbers, take note of the cipher suite and packet size used for the performance number. Not all SSL numbers are measured equally, and firewall vendors are notorious for posting weak ciphers and large packets to make their numbers look better than what you would get in the real world. Number two, next-gen firewall features. Next-gen firewalls have a lot of great features like IPS, application identification, antivirus, and many others. However, there is a performance cost for every feature that's enabled. In NSS's 2018 Next Generation Firewall report, some vendors dropped as much as 82% by enabling IPS and application identification, and that wasn't even including more resource-intense features like antivirus, web filtering, and DLP. Your first step is deciding on what features you need or plan to implement. Next, decide where on your network those features will be enabled. For example, if you decide you need web filtering, you only need to enable it on outbound web traffic. If web traffic accounts for 40% of your total circuit and you have one gig circuit, you would effectively need about 400 megabits of web filtering capabilities. 
the majority of vendors won't have performance numbers for every permutation of next-gen features. Instead, they may have one performance numbers with several features enabled and call it something like either threat protection or threat prevention. This too can vary from vendor to vendor, so keep an eye out for what's included in their terminology. Again, when comparing products, always look at the traffic type and packet size for any advertised number. This varies greatly across the industry, so make sure you're comparing apples to apples when comparing two different sets of numbers. Number one, maximum sessions, also referred to as concurrent sessions. As their names imply, this refers to the total number of firewall sessions a box can support. Like connections per seconds earlier, this can vary greatly from network to network depending on a number of different factors like traffic type, protocols, session timeouts, users, and many other factors. Thankfully, as technology has evolved, next generation firewall vendors have added plenty of memory to support most normal networks for their target market. In fact, in all my years consulting and designing next generation firewalls for telcos and large customers, I've never seen the maximum session on any device get exhausted before other things like connections per second, CPU, memory, when other features are being enabled. But this can be a serious problem for data centers or other internet facing traffic where the connections can be unpredictable. It's also a main target of DDoS attacks, which try to overwhelm a firewall by sending too much traffic at once and exhausting the connections per second or max sessions a firewall can support. If you don't have a firewall that can tell you how many sessions you currently have, calculate about 100 sessions per user or device. This is usually a safe bet when trying to determine how many maximum sessions you need. The CISO Perspective Security should come without compromising business objectives. An undersized firewall can be catastrophic to your network performance and business availability. That's why sizing the right box for your organization is crucial. An undersized firewall can not only bring your entire network down, but it can also undermine your entire security policy by failing open. As resources get limited, some firewalls will stop inspecting traffic to conserve CPU and memory. So make sure you understand what your firewall's behavior is and make sure it aligns with your security policy. So that does it for this video guys. I hope it was informative and if it was, please comment, hit like, and subscribe to stay on top of all of our latest releases.